Hi, my name is Julia and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about art, museums and books. So I do hope that March will be more forgiving. <laughs> and first of all, because there are more days in March than in February and hence more opportunities to read books. Uh, but also because I haven't planned any long distance um, trips and um, so I hope that it's gonna be like chill month. Uh, I'm going to stay at home more often and uh, yeah, just enjoy reading books. However, I uh, am not planning like a long TBR list, uh, so it means that I have like six books uh, in my list and I want to talk about them today. However, if for some reason I'll finish all of them, um, I have of course a pile of books I still need to begin or read or continue to read, so <laughs> I will come back to them. But you will learn about it uh, in my March wrap up. Nevertheless, let's begin with the books that I'm going to read this month. And I want to begin with a book that is titled Two Trees Make a Forest. Listen, if I were ever, ever be able to write a book, I would title it like that. But it's already occupied. So, And the reason why I would uh, title my book this way, it's basically this is a description of my family name. This is exactly how my father explained me the uh, history of our family name and this is how I now explain it to other people. So my family name is Korean, it is Lim. In Cyrillic and Latin um, transcriptions, it is written uh, in, with this distinguished L. However, in Korean, it is written either like rim or im. So my dad says that our transliteration or our name is written like this, like im. Uh, however, all these Korean family names derive from the Chinese and um, it is written like that <laughs> with two Chinese characters. Each one uh, means wood or tree. So that's why two trees make a forest. <laughs> now you know the reason why I was immediately drawn to this book. And, uh, but the truth is actually I've seen this book in the Berlin bookshop and uh, I've seen it in German. I googled it and apparently it was originally written in English. So I decided, yeah, why not just to pick an English version of it and read it because a uh, German version would just take me more time to read than the English one. So I got back home, I ordered it online and now I have it. I already started yesterday because yesterday was the first day of March <laughs> and uh, so far so good, I'm really enjoying it. So the, the story goes this way, Jessica J. Lee uh, is Canadian, um, born in the immigrant family from Taiwan, but she herself became an immigrant when she traveled to uh, Berlin when she moved to Berlin and now she lives there. Jessica J. Lee undertook an immense work of uh, discovering her own family history, which we all know is rather difficult to everybody, almost everybody. In those first 50 pages I learned that her grandfather, uh, before he got Alzheimer or maybe at the beginning of uh, this illness, he wrote a letter, 20 pages letter to her, to his daughter about the family history. And so Jessica J. Lee translated it and started to unravel this complicated history of a family. So first of all, I love, I love when we do that, when we um, research our own families. And this is, I, I would love to dedicate my own time to that even more if I were only able, you know, to quit my job and <laughs> everything. Um, I would love to do the same. And I love to see people doing it. So apart from the title, this is the main reason why I picked that book. Um, so far I'm enjoying it, but as Jessica J. Lee describes herself, uh, she's a researcher of like environment and landscapes. So the description of geographical and geological characteristics of the island of Taiwan and uh, the nature, the trees, the uh, plants that are vegetating in Taiwan, those descriptions is rather 
difficult for me because again English is my second language and、uh, I encounter a lot of unfamiliar names of the、uh, biological species, so <laughs> that is for me a bit difficult. But when she switches to description of her family and history and culture, immediately easy to understand. It's、uh, and it's fascinating. So yeah, so far so good. I'm really enjoying it. So this is my first book in my March、uh, TBR. The second one,、um, let's keep the same subject. <laughs> so I got this book. Without the、um, the dust cover <laughs> because it's a secondhand book,、uh, but anyways, I'll put the beautiful、uh, graphic design here. This is the book that is called Anxious to Trouble by Maud Newton. So here's another attempt to discover the family history through、um, different means. As far as I understand, Maud Newton、uh, used genealogy.、Uh, I don't. I'm not sure if it's a science, but genealogical, let's say, research instruments in order to dive into the story of her own family. Maud Newton was born in Dallas to a Texan mother and Mississippian father, and、uh, she is trying to unravel the history of her family. As you can see, the subject is really interesting to me,、uh, so I got this book. I don't remember how exactly I heard about it, but I think it was. Already in my like shopping list before it was published, and yeah, it was published in 2022. However, I didn't buy it immediately because it was I don't know maybe 30 bucks or something like that, and I didn't want to spend so much. I had different priorities. Let's say I didn't want to spend so much money on this book, but then、uh, recently I found it on、uh, Better World Books, and it was relatively cheaper, so I. I ordered it, and now I have it, and I'm going to read it this month. So the next book is、uh, from my Christmas book haul. I got it from like the New Yorker best books list randomly,、uh, and this is the Haunting of Haji Hotak. And other stories by Jamil Jankochai. So, as far as I understand, this is the collection of short stories of、uh, various people from Afghanistan who emigrated into the States, and、uh, it's basically the collection of their experiences. And of course, I do like the story of immigrants because. As I already told you a million times, I am myself an immigrant, and my family has this history of immigration. So yeah, I'm really glad that back in December I randomly picked that book, and now I'm exposed to even more interesting stories and experiences. So the next book I will just briefly introduce to you because I already talked about it extensively in my previous video about women on art. So it is an autobiographical work by、uh, the French conceptual artist Sophie Cal. It is called. True stories, and as I already told you,、uh, it consists of a short true story on one page and、um, the accompanying photo on the neighboring page. So this is,、um, I think, is going to be like an art experience because again, she is an artist, and、uh, I'm sure she conceptualized her autobiography and book experience in her own way. So yeah, the. Next one、um, is actually going also to be on my birthday book haul. Wait for that; it's coming because <laughs> I got birthday、uh, this February, and、uh, I got this from my friends. And this is none other than Ocean Wong on Earth. We're briefly gorgeous. I was meaning to have this book for a long time, and、uh, first because of the bo booktube, a lot of people recommended this book, a lot of、uh, people read this book, and obviously, I'm no different. <laughs> I really wanted to read that too. But then one day, I heard about that Ocean Wong、uh, gave an interview to. Uh, the podcast that is called "On Being" by Krista Tippett, and、um, I've listened to it, and I was crying <laughs> like a baby when he was talking about his life experience and、uh, the reasoning behind his books. And the first thing that strikes you is actually how beautiful he speaks. It's just amazing.、Uh, I would never be able to speak that. Eloquently, let's say, as he does. So after listening to that podcast, my wish to read this book has 
skyrocketed. I wanted this book so bad.、Um, but then I had a lot of other books to read, and my friends、um, approaching my birthday, they were asking me, like,、hey, what do you want to、uh, for a gift? Maybe、um, some book. So I sent them the list of books, and one of them was Ocean Wang. And、uh, yes, they gifted it to me, and I'm so happy, so happy. And the last book that I'm going to read this March is a Russian classics. Uh, that I meant to read in high school, but I haven't because I was a lazy student. <laughs> but another reason I think that I haven't read a lot of Russian classics when I was a teenager is that I think, and I truly believe in that, that some of the works that were written in Russia in the 19th and 20th century require you to be a mature reader. I think. I'm finally at that stage of my life that I'll be able to understand and appreciate this book, and this book is called *The Master and Margarita*. I have it in a beautiful Russian hard copy, but obviously I'll put the、uh, English cover here. So as I mentioned, I haven't read it, but growing up in Russia,、uh, you kind of consume this book through. Indirect way, so through maybe jokes, maybe references,、uh, maybe mass pop culture. But I remember watching a film adaptation that is called *The Master and Margarita* in, on Russian television. But I haven't finished that one, so I just remember the episode of、uh, Pontius. Pilot. Wait, how is it called?、Uh, pilot. Pontius Pilot,、um, who was interrogating a character that was reminiscent of Jesus.、Uh, I don't remember how. What's he called? And、um, I remember that episode, but I couldn't fathom what is it to do with Master and Margarita. So I was just wondering. Anyways,、uh, shame on me. And this is my experience of Master Margarita, and、uh, I think I finally got to the point when it's time to read. So I finished listening lectures by Marieta Chudakova. Marieta Chudakova was a very prominent researcher and biographer of Mikhail Bulgakov. She also、uh, wrote an introduction to this book、uh, about the history of the novel.、Um, so in her lectures, she explains a lot of insights、um, of like. Meanings and、uh, why it was such an important novel back then.、Uh, she also has done such a great research in restoration of the first version of Master Margarita.、Uh, as you might know, Bulgakov、uh, attempted to write this novel two times. First one was basically fail, and he burned the novel. Bulgakov, nevertheless, had his second attempt, second and successful attempt to write and finish this novel, and now we have it. But after listening to that lectures, I think I realized how relevant this novel is, especially in our difficult times with the authoritative states and uh, uh, our relationship with the freedom of speech and art. I think it will be very helpful to get through these times,、um, but maybe also got some idea how we can handle it, and maybe we can learn from Bulgakov and his life、uh, a little bit more. Obviously, as a layman,、um, the person who is not a writer, who is not a literary critic, and、uh, who is not a solemn researcher of Mikhail Bulgakov、um, works. I cannot teach you about it, but if you're interested in what Maria da Chudakova were talking about in her lectures, maybe some insights, and if you want to know what I learned from those lectures and how it changed my experience in reading this book, let me know in the comments because then I'll make a special video of me reading Master and Margarita and uh, uh, yeah, maybe seeing some things that are related to Russian history specifically. So yeah, that was the last book of my March TBR. I hope you enjoy that.、Um, as I said, I hope I will finish all of them because some of them are quite challenging, such as the Master and Margarita. But also, I see that Ancestor Trouble is rather 
thick book and um, I guess requires me diving into American history a little bit more. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me and uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I am going to enjoy these beautiful books. <laughs> uh, anyways, I will be posting my next video very soon about the Blackathon uh, results, uh, Blackathon wrap-up. Uh, so yeah, uh, stay tuned and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye!